In hypothesis testing, somebody comes to you with a claim. So someone comes to you and says, you know, Jack claims that the average product weight is not the 500 gram label on it. Notice that this is a serious claim. Comes to you and says, you are at fault. You're labeling your products 500 grams on each, but on average, it's not 500 gram, okay? So let's think about this. If somebody comes to you with that claim, what do you do? He is making a claim about all of the products. And he's making a claim about the mean of all of the products. What do you say? What do you do? Take a sample. Exactly. That's what we do all the time. So we take a sample to verify if it's true or false. And then what in the sample would be an indicator of his correctness? If we get a sample mean that is close to his claim, then maybe he's right. If we get a sample mean that is very far from his claim, then we'd say, you know what? Our sample is against what you are claiming, so we are going to reject your claim, okay? So the process has a little more detail to, to be precise because scientists don't want to rush to judgment. So what they do is they go through a process that I will show you. But before that, let's, uh, let's say what are the numbers that we get. Let's say we take a sample of, I don't know, 10 products. And in our sample, we see 490, uh, 4. 80, we see five, uh, fifty, we see five, ten, five, oh, five, four, seventy, four, sixty, three, four, five, six, seven, four, ninety, five. 20 and 540, okay? So we got this sample, and based on this sample, we are going to judge him, okay? So please type these numbers in your, this is a very real life scenario, as I told you. Find the mean and standard deviation of this sample using your calculator or using Excel. Be quick, please. For the mean of the sample, we have 502.5. For a standard deviation of the sample, we have 27.8139. Okay, so what, should, what is our judgment about this person's claim? He says it is not 500 gram, and we also didn't get 500 gram. But maybe it is 500 gram, and our sample is showing us 502, because you know, every time that we take it, if I take another sample, it may end up to be 499 or something. So maybe the, the mean of the population, maybe it is 500 and we got 502. So you see that we have a, this dilemma that a t tiny difference in the sample doesn't allow us to accept or reject anything. So we follow a process, okay? I write every step of the process. Please take note because up to the last topic of this book, everything is based on this method, okay? We will write what is in the claim first. It says the mean of the population is not 500 grams. 
Okay. Step one. Step two is that we write the opposite of that. Mean of the population is 500 gram because every time that we have a, a hypothesis, either the hypothesis is true or the reverse of it is true. Then we look at the two hypotheses that we have and we choose the one that has equality and we call it the null hypothesis. And the other one would automatically be the alternative hypothesis. It's just a naming. Maybe I write down the steps so far. Step one is it is coming from the question, whatever is the claim. Step two, we wrote the opposite. Step three, we choose the one that has equal sign. Step four, the other one would be the alternative hypothesis. Then we accept the null hypothesis tentatively. The one that has equality. And we think about, okay, if that claim is true, what is likely to happen and what is not likely to happen, okay? To my sample mean, okay? Do we know, what do we know about the sample mean? Sample mean varies, varies with a normal distribution. The mean of all of the sample means is the mean of the population based on central limit theory. Standard deviation of the variations of sample mean is standard deviation of the whole population divided by square root of n because sample mean doesn't vary very much. Okay. Now, what is the mean at this point? What is the mean of the population? 502.5 or? Just think of it. This is a tricky question. Let's clarify this. Okay. What is the mean of the population for us? 500. Exactly. We just don't forget that we accepted the null tentatively. So at this moment, everything that we write is based on the, that claim that the mean of the population is 500 grams. Okay, what is the standard deviation of the population? What is the standard deviation of the population? Don't know. We don't know. How do you feel? Sad. Yes. Yeah. Is there anyone who can help you? Yeah. Who? Yeah, we can take S divided by the like, root of N. That's the life? Because you you like it, you will take S? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, we, we take no, our... There is, a, there is a guy who can come and help us uh, without gossip. his help. Gossett, yes, yes. Gossett says, don't use normal, use my T distribution with a degree of freedom of nine, nine and then you can use S divided by square root of N. Now I can use S, which is 27.8139, divided by a square root of 10. Now I, I know everything about this, the variations of X bar. Eight point seven nine five five. Eight point seven nine five. Very good. So now we want to think now, what are the possibilities to accept or reject the null based on our sample? No, if our, we accepted that the mean is 500. If the mean of the sample that we take turns out to be very far 
on this side. Let's say if the mean of the sample turns out to be 900, is it consistent with this null that we accepted? No. 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 So this is not good. If this happens, we can reject the null. If the mean of the sample turns out to be 200, is it consistent with the null? No. That claims that we are equal? No. So also if any of these happens, these are not consistent. But the question is, you know, what is these things that can enable us to reject? Because if 501 or 502 happens, these are not significant. If 600 happens, then say, oh, that's not consistent with the null. If 501 happens, then, you know, we, can, we cannot just simply, because of a tiny difference, reject it. Most statisticians think that if something that has 5% chance of, as low as 5% chance uh, happening, happens based on a claim, um, you know, something based on a claim has 5% chance of happening, and ha it happens. Then a significant amount, significant event has happened. Significance. This is called the level of significance. So if something with the chance less than five, is it something that has 1% chance, if something that has a chance less than 5% happening based on a claim happens, then that claim is not a good claim and we will reject it. If a claim says 500 and something that has 40% chance of happening happens, we are not surprised because it had 40% chance of happening. But if something that based on the claim has 5% chance of happening happens, we will reject the claim. So these are called rejection areas. And these boundary points are called the Z critical, or uh, sorry, they're called the T critical, T critical, because we're using T. These are the critical points of the rejection or critical boundaries of the rejection area. So if something beyond these, you know, uh, 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 an observation happens that is that strange with the claim, then we will reject the claim. So what is the, this critical region in this case? 5%. Um, so if this combination of these two is 5%, each one is 0.25%. The total chance of those things that are strange and significant is 5%. So now we have to go to our T table and find out how far uh, are those from the mean. So now I go to T table. Notice that T table has uh, three headers. You're familiar with one of them. We used in chapter eight for confidence interval. But there are two other tables that are, or two other headers for the table that are organized based on the tail. Look at your notes. How many tails do you see in, uh, in the example that we are working on? Now, each one of these is called a tail. Two. Yeah, we have two tails. So, this table can answer the questions about two tails, can also answer about one tails. And in this case, we have two tails. And how much we want the area of those two tails to be combined in our example? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So we are, in fact, interested in this column. Two tailed and 5%. Uh, so let me then erase what we don't want. We are not interested in one tail. We are not interested in that. So now, what is the degree of freedom? Nine. Nine. This is the degree of freedom. So if we go 2.262 standard deviations far from the mean to the left side and to the right side, then these remaining tails would be 5%. Just remember 2.262, I'm going back to my 
problem. Okay. So T critical was, please help. Two point two six two. Okay. Okay. So, if our observation is, you know, three standard deviations from the claim, then we will reject it. If it is two standard deviations, then it's not significant enough to enable us to reject the norm. So the last step is to find out how far is our observation. R of the T of our observation. What is our observation? Maybe I will write it in red because this is what will solve everything. So T of observation is my observation. How far is my observation from the claim? Minus 500 divided by standard deviation of 8.7955. Point two eight four two. Point two eight four two. So where is it? Is it here or it is here? Zero point two eight four. Is it far from the mean? Notice that the R definition of far is two point two six two. Uh, or it is not very far. It's actually here. Yeah. This is the T of our observation. It is not in the rejection area. In other words, observation is not surprising. It's not far from the claim. And when that happens, we fail we, for the null, we fail to reject the null because we didn't see anything significant. And we suspend our judgment about the other one as well. So you see, we, when we fail to reject the null, it means that there is no significant evidence. Therefore, we neither reject the null and we don't even say anything about the alternative. We just suspend our judgment. There was a claim, we took a sample. The sample, of course, is a little bit different, but it's not going to, it's not significant enough to reject the norm. Wait, Could, Amir? Yes. Could you go down and just a little bit for one sec? Of course. So the, it was 0 0.2842. Oh, okay, Never mind. sorry, I thought it was 2.842, Never mind. What? I mean, I have a question. Um, when you say the freedom is nine, like, oh, where did you infer, infer from? Like, how many observations do we have? Uh, we have ten observations, right? Do we know their mean? Yeah. For every mean that we know, we lose one degree of freedom. Okay. So there are 10 observations, there could be anything, but because we can calculate their mean, then the actual degree of freedom is not 10, it's actually nine. Okay, all right, thank you. My pleasure. 